Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen Hop topics with Zin and Board Gamer. That's that's us. We're we're doing we're doing a new thing. Why well, say new thing? We're continuing a thing we did and maybe evolving it somewhat. We want to chat every week or so about what's going on in the world of Star Citizen, what we like, what we don't like, and and some hot topics, as the name implies. So we are gearing up to 3.13.0 live. And we've been playing a reasonable amount of the PTU, although we've also been playing quite a lot of Conan Exiles in our spare time. Um, but uh, yeah, so 3.13, it's been a long road through the PTU, and it's been relatively um, delayed by about three weeks so far. Although we are um, thinking it's highly likely that the live build will be in the next few days. So Thursday, Friday sort of time. But Zin, what do you think about the delay? Have from your experience with Star Citizen so far, is a three-week delay for a patch um, something that should be expected? Something that's incredibly minor? Is it annoying? Do you think they should try and hit the deadlines um, like it was really supposed to be at the end of March? They were supposed to release 3.13? Um, but well, what do you think about that sort of stuff? Uh, I think given Star Citizen's um, history, yeah, I think that's completely reasonable and fine. So you think it's normal? So, so it... it if every patch is three weeks delayed, is that cause for annoyance or concern or meh? I mean, I think I think if they're going to set... I know obviously they don't like setting deadlines, but they attempt to do a patch every quarter, don't they? So they should really be trying to reach that. And if they're falling behind, then maybe they need to start looking at what they're promising and like how much they're promising, what they can do to make sure they reach those deadlines. And there's something to be said for that um, even when they do have, okay, when they do have deadlines and when they do have their goals and priorities, that a PTU phase may reveal that there are bugs and blockers that um, will take time to solve. Now, th there's going to be a bit of a, not a coin toss, but there's they're going to be looking at certain things when it comes to blockers. Do we remove this feature that's causing the blocker or do we hold the patch to... Uh, a week or two or three longer so that we can get this feature in. Now, with that in mind, do you think there should be really hard cutoff dates for features? It's not in It's not in for the end of March, so uh, we'll release the patch without that feature. Do you think it should be like that? Or do you think there should be some leeway like they've given it and where they go, well, actually, we're, we want to get this in, so we're going to hold it? Um, I think it's a, a difficult thing because I think they should... Obviously, if, if they don't think that they can produce something in time, then they should just go, it's not going to be in. It'll be in the next one or it'll be in an X patch. Um, however, you'll have things that they need in order to make other things work. Yeah. Or like, or it, or it needs to be able to work in order for the other things in the patch to work sort of thing. Yeah, we desperately need this feature x and we can't actually remove it so ooh, mm. we're gonna have to solve the blockers but like i said like it that this this if it if this sort of thing continues then it's a case of they need to look at what they're promising in the first place rather than getting to the point of well we're gonna have to start cutting things yeah i mean do you think that they might benefit from having the ptu a week earlier or something like that or or do you think that it is well when they branch off the build um, it's still going to cause just as many problems because when they branch it off, it just needs testing. Well, I'm wondering if it's because it, how many people actually play the PTU, find bugs and actually report on them? So there's around 2,000 um, Eva Carti players. Yeah. Uh, and I think that you probably, my expectation, anecdotally, but my expectation would be that there's around uh, six to 10,000 PTU players um, total, not, not, not concurrent around uh, that sort of player base um uh, around a ptu patch it could be more but that's the thing is like i say like you've got these people playing the ptu i play the ptu honestly i've never submitted a bug even though i've come across them i i i think i might need to get you doing that that's not my job you don't pay me to do that <laughs> well not yet <laughs> as in but it, might, it might be good practice for you to do that so that we cover that as these are bugs that we found or something and it might be might be good content it's, it's good practice so i mean i talked about it in my uh, one of my videos i like tr try and submit 
bugs to the issue council mm. when you can. Um, I suppose you don't want to go out of your way to ruin your gameplay experience. Some people are not there to test bugs. Yeah. That is not what some people want out of Star Citizen at the stage. Yeah. They want a um, semi-playable game, even if it's a, as a tourist. But some people want to want to get involved with that, and it, both types of player need to be catered yeah, for. Yeah, but this is what I'm trying to say, is that is there any point putting it to first wave PTU or second wave PTU if most of that player base aren't actually going to be reporting on bugs? Like, they're not helping the, the development of the game, basically. It might be better just to keep it in Evocati because those people are actually more, you know, that that's why they're Evocati. Detri- they're, they're detrimental to the development process when you're wanting to focus test mm-hmm. something, when you've got too many people. Yes, um, that that's one of the reasons they keep it in Evocati quite long. They, they only release it to Wave 1 PTU, either, seemingly, when they get too much pressure from people like, go to Wave 1, yeah. um, or... Um, when they go, well, actually, it needs more stress testing or a wider audience. They're, they're actually, they seem to be pretty good with their testing. Um, but the, the, the issue I have is, is a communication one where they seemingly are erratic. It, it, it's a mixture of the rules seem to change and they're a bit erratic with communication and, and those rules. So you go, we are planning to release um, a patch every quarter and we'll push features back if we have to to release a patch. But we'll also... A delay the patch if there's features that we want to get in and that's it's it's just i wish they'd say um when it's in ptu look um this is the likelihood of s- some of this stuff getting delayed or um the patch getting delayed we're keeping definitely keeping all these features in but it's going to take a bit longer i just wish they communicate that a bit a bit sort of better um yeah otherwise it leaves us guessing when it's going to come out and we're a bit unsure of what's the current mindset of cig are they um, delaying the patch or are they delaying the feature mm. but that's the thing as well um like are they they seem to not want to do deadlines you know well they used to but then they would fail the deadlines and got rightly criticized yeah. for constantly failing deadlines so why give deadlines if people are just going to be like that i mean at the end of the day it's their game i, I understand obviously people are paying money and they're literally supporting the company but you see people be like that i would say that largely especially in the past it's almost entirely clown and pyramid's fault mm-hmm. because it w- it wasn't the case of oh we're planning to roughly get it around then it was some hard release dates or at least lots of release dates that they're almost certainly going to make and they kept on getting pushed back and we still don't have salvage in the game after several years of it being a, a, a sort of like a feature that we were expecting squadron 42 is is i was expecting it in 2016 is still not out and and, and th- th- there have been lots and lots and lots of things and lots and lots and lots of features and lots and lots and lots of deadlines that have constantly been pushed back which makes star sets and releases and timelines basically look like a joke um, and and it is it's, it's certainly a community meme it, it, they are rightly criticized for it is what i'm trying to say but they are a lot better at it in the in the shorter t- um, in the shorter term they have been a lot better overall if they're gonna miss deadlines or pushback features mm-hmm. then i guess the, the only real course mm-hmm. of action is communication let people know that this is happening yes. maybe maybe why this is happening maybe not if you want to try to keep things a bit hush hush i don't understand why they want to keep stuff hush hush and that's one of the reasons i don't understand why people don't um they've got an nda for the eva yeah. even. like i i can imagine there are secret test things that they want to do for theaters of war or if we have a test squadron but i think the nda is more of a, a catch-all for in case anything yes. is being tested, but it's it's only really going to be for maybe Squadron 42 or for Theatres of War, and they want to keep that stuff quiet. And it's just easier to NDA the whole lot than just specific things. A state of the PTU every week from Cloud Imperium during a PTU phase, even during the Eva Carti, mm-hmm. would be great. We've identified these major issues which require time. Some of these may take longer than others, blah, 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 blah. And then each week we fix this, bam. Not in the form of patch notes, but in the form of someone that is probably uh, community facing that understands what the community wants to sort of hear and uh, would be good to say to them, uh, would write that document. And I I honestly think that would be a great thing. I mean, that's that's basically some of the content that we produce here. Um, But we base we base it off the patch notes. And if CIG started to actively communicate that that stuff, that would be fantastic, I think. Um, There's a lot of stuff they miss the mark when it comes to communication, in my opinion. Um, and I think that you're in a, a nice position where you've come into Star Citizen um, m- much more recently. So when you see a delay or whatever, you're, you're much more sort of dismissive as, as, well, that sort of stuff happens. Uh, Star Citizen. <laughs> well, yeah, but I see it as I can't see how with all the delays in the past, 
and the problems that they've had with time frames that they still get some of the same stuff wrong and that that's not that, I, I think that's a fair criticism of the project i i love cloud imperium i love star citizen i expect these things to happen and cloud imperium do say they say look look we 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 have a two a two sort of step process where we effectively will delay patches sometimes or will delay features sometimes but it depends on our priorities and that that sort of should be known now and that should be the prefix and suffix for any of these conversations look it, as much as i i complain about certain things and uh, lack of communication and it is all cut down to a lack of communication really um it's um it, cig do say look this is this is how it is sort of deal with it and uh, yeah and for the most part we do but i'll still i'll still be a bit of a you know still be critical of stuff i think that's fair still be a bit critical i think another thing they could do um because obviously you've got other games out there that don't have the uh, i say the luxury they don't they don't really have a, a testing phase like so g- games that are out say take apex legends for example yeah mhm they release a patch it breaks something in the game they then roll back the patch yeah yeah i would prefer star citizen to release a patch go well this is broken x y and z in the game most people will probably be like eh we'll get around it you know it starts it isn't it it's janky that's how it is um or they'll just go we're going to just pull that patch back you've seen it you see what it's like this is what we've got but we can't we, we need to work on it okay yeah yeah as an idea i don't know no, I, I could i could certainly see that i think that games like eve or mmos and stuff they need to have that ptu face they need Mm. to they need to have that test universe where stuff's tested like that before going live because in the future when the game is truly live and there are no more taxis backsies that would be very hard to roll back do you see what i mean yeah so this sort of test environment that they've got and the way they 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 move for that and sort of like there is a procedure to that and it is very good for an mmo so what what are your experiences of the PTU been like for three point thirteen sin? Because you haven't had a, a super terrible time or anything, have you? I know with some of the previous PTUs, you've had like it keeps on crashing constantly. I can't do anything and things like that. So what are your experiences of three point thirteen been so far? Performance wise, pretty good. Frame rates were a bit low, but the general stav- service stability and the ability to actually do things was a lot better than previous PTUs. Yeah, yeah. I generally go in to PTUs going, I'm not going to get the best performance out of this, whether that's down to the fact that they've just not finished like smoothing things over or because of the servers they're running on, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. Obviously, when I first uh, played some of the PTU, they had that massive bug with being unable to spawn ships, like every now and then. And in a space game where you want to, you know, fly around in space and you don't just want to take the train all day, which sometimes will just be, <laughs> yeah. that will kill you anyway. Um, if it turns up. Yeah, you want to play with your spaceships in a space game. I, th- I think that's probably the bare minimum I expect from Star Citizen after yeah. several years. Um, so yeah, when, when, when there's a bug like that, it is sort of soul destroying. It's just sort of like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very briefly. It's like, I can't, I can't do anything. I can't do, it's not even like, oh, well, I wanted to do bounty missions. I guess I can't, like my hornet was bugging out I, that was like my bounty <laughs> he mission he was a happy ship. boy he was very very excited but i was like oh well i can't do bounty missions in that i'll use a different ship but it was a case of i can't do anything i can't do mining i can't do i mean to be fair i didn't try any ground vehicles that might have worked but somehow doubt it because it was it seemed to be like a, an area-based thing so I, the first time i spawned at uh, lawville couldn't spawn anything every hangar was apparently full couldn't spawn anything change server it worked. Went up to um, Everest Harbour, landed, couldn't spawn anything. That sort of stuff is soul destroying. But what about like the more fun gameplay? If you so obviously you've seen the reputation system now. You've done some bounties and stuff like that. Do you think that some of that gameplay is actually good enough to hold over the three point thirteen uh, sort of patch cycle, or do you think it's going to be a bit a bit boring for the next couple of months until three point fourteen or Fleet Week or Nine Tails Lockdown or whatever? Um, I think. Uh, especially for someone like me like i said before like i was looking forward to the reputation system i think it's great it's it's wonderful to be able to do bounty missions or whatever sort of missions and see how that affects your standing with people and also the fact that you get bonuses when you level up with them and things like that okay zin say there is a wipe 
at any point with a long-term business and database. So they would wipe your your money that you earned in game and your ships that you had earned in game, not the ones you bought with real money. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you lose anything? Have you ground up much, or would it be like no? Meh. I'll just be like, oh, I've got to go find my boon butt again. Oh, okay, yeah. So Zin's got a very specific flight suit that she likes to use. Uh, so I think it's a steel skin or something like that, yeah. but it's got a red butt. It has got a baboon butt. Um, yeah, I, I've not, I've not ground up. I've not bought any ships. Um, I've not bought any guns because I don't really know what I'm doing. To be fair. Well, that's good to hear. Seeing that you're a star citizen professional. Mate, no one knows what they're doing in that game. No, I'm such a professional. I don't need new ships and guns. That's true. You've got a, a list of things to do. Zin, do this. Zin, do that. I do think we'll have a bit of a um, goal series where we're trying to do something. And we might have some competitions in the future. Where, like as much money as you can make in an hour um, or scavenger hunting game and things like that. We'll do, we'll do some fun. Um, once it's got more solid gameplay and permanent persistence and some other stuff to do, um, I do think we'll we'll be playing it a lot more. But um, yeah, I think you've identified something there that Star Citizen is not really properly long-term playable for the mainstream gamer yet, for, mm-hmm. for sure. Like it is, as I constantly say, it is much more of a labor of love or um, tourist destination game. You can have hundreds, if not thousands of hours of fun in Star Citizen with the right organization, for sure. And lots of people do. Um, and Star Citizen's got a great community and it's a fantastic game. Um, to, to, to mess around with now very sandboxy and cool um, and I'm looking forward to its future but um, it is not a sit down and play game yet and um, let's not beat around the bush with that uh, so what are you looking forward to from the live build when it goes live what are you looking forward to anything particular no no I'm just like like I said bounty missions I, I, I see myself yeah. being an NPC bounty hunter not a PvP bounty hunter it's certainly a fun thing to do um, as in it's, it's one of the things that you can grind in now Mm. Um, so one of my questions I was going to ask you a little bit later was uh, what current gameplay and the sort of gameplay you're going to see from 3.13 what would you like to grind in what would you like to do the most sort of like if you had to do it day in day out and I think for me as well it's probably bounty hunting at the moment um, because you get a bit of combat in you can fly around see different destinations you can see lots of pretty stuff it's relatively good money uh, the reputation system supports it so you're actually working towards something I think that the rep system does actually bring something to the game, even if it's just showing you your progress and giving you a, bit, a little bit of extra money um, for once you've done a, a chain of missions. What about Fleet Week? So you had just started playing Star Citizen a bit more for me uh, before you started working for me, though, um, during Fleet Week last year. I was like, Zin, help me get some shots and things of the uh, of the Idris and mm. the, the Javelin. Um, so what are you expecting from Fleet Week this year? Um, what would you like to see? What do you remember of last year? Oh, I, I remember most of it. Um, I think I, I'd like to see at least the same, if not more. Like you said, you think you're gonna be, we're gonna be seeing the Nine Tails thing, maybe around that time. Well, maybe not around that time. I was expecting the Nine Tails lockdown as part of the three point thirteen cycle, um, just because Clan Pyramid said they've got eight to ten events planned for the rest of 2021 and they were sort of like using that in context of the xeno threat so it's like well maybe it's not 10 xeno threat type mission sets maybe it's some minor ones like fleet week could be one of those events is nine tails lockdown going to be part of the 3.13 cycle or is it a 3.14 cycle thing but last year at fleet week that was great we got to fight npc um navy fleet we got to steal and and mess around with the javelin and the idris i don't think that was intended no, but that's great. That's one of the things I love about Star Citizen, when you can, you know, steal an Idris. They go, these capital ships aren't supposed to be in game because they're not ready. Oh, well, I'm flying them. And the NPC gunners in my ship still fire and target things. So that's, I mean, th- there's a lot of interesting, cool stuff that if CIG were like, it's not ready yet, but we're going to give it to you anyway, um, would be fantastic. And, and when they do like a big event like Xeno Threat or like Fleet Week or whatever, I love when stuff is broken i love it when stuff uh, we can steal things i love people trying to find the interesting things that you can do and i know last year at fleet week they wanted to have like flybys on planets and and things like that so they've got a lot more working in the game now that hopefully this year's fleet week will be interesting and fun i i think that sometimes you get the like intergalactic aerospace expo or or the sort of um, expos they do quite boring because they just go it's uh the only thing that's happening is a free fly and you can go and rent some ships and there's not much else going on. But when they have like an in-game 
event at the same time where a fleet's flying around from station to station and it's pretty and there's cool stuff that can happen. There's loads of stuff you can break. Then I'm excited. Then I'm like, what do we do? Let's mess around. Let's go. Oh, it's going. Oh, it's pretty. Um, and I, I love it when combat and stuff's happening. Like Xeno Threat was fantastic. The, the combat part of Xeno Threat was, was genuinely quite cool. The um, trying to get cargo was cool, except for PvP is trying to, um, you know, blow up the cargo. Yeah, so do you think we'll see Nine Tails Lockdown 3.13 cycle then? Or do you think that Fleet Week and Nine Tails are very much separate? Um, I think it's it's possible that Nine Tails may turn up on or around Fleet Week. They might just do it like they did with the um, International Aerospace Expo, where they just basically hacked the comms and broadcast a message at the uh, event. Oh, yeah, just a little teaser that the event's going to happen soon sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Xeno Threat... I say it's their first proper dynamic event or whatever. Really, it was Fleet Week last year, in my opinion. They've got a lot more under their belt now. Obviously, the community's been chomping at the bit about the Rock DS, and we've talked about it once before. Um, do you see any point in the Rock DS? Do you think it's dumb? I think it's dumb. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's a bit dumb. It just doesn't, doesn't seem to have much function. I, I prefer to have two rocks, or just a single rock for myself, yeah. to be honest, rather than trying to, you know... Because that's the thing. It's like There's no point soloing it. Mm-hmm. Because you have no control over the vehicle when you're mining. Mm-hmm. Um, so you might as well use a normal rock. And if you're going to have two of you, like you say, you might as well take two rocks. Or do something else. It just seems hard to make profit. But maybe maybe there'll be something in 3.13 that I'm yet unaware of. Or maybe the Rock DS has more function that we're yet unaware of. Because they haven't got put it on sale yet. Expect that um, vehicle to go on sale this weekend. Um, Cyclone MT... It, what did you think of it when you were driving it around? You were like, yeah, I suppose you haven't dr- driven most, much of the Cyclones anyway. I haven't, no, I haven't driven it actually. You you got it out and drove it around a bit before I managed to turn up. Because uh, you killed me, if you remember. I don't remember that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't, that didn't happen. What are, you, are you talking about when I swatted you? Yeah, it was like a bug on the underside of your yeah, uh, that was, Connie. That was, was it Connie? A little bit your fault. You're not anywhere near me. Yeah, okay. that was like 30 seconds before you killed me. No, 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 that was a few seconds. That was like a couple of... That was, pff, you said that after I killed you. No, wait. <laughs> Accidents happen. Accidents do happen. But yeah, so unfortunately I've not used the um, the Cyclone MT. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of mess around with them. We have been entered into uh, Hurston Hot Locker. Um, so we'll be doing some vehicular combat later this year. Yay. <laughs> You're going to love it. You're going to love it, Sin. You love playing games with me. I'm a pleasure to play with. You're a pleasure to play with. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to 3.13 live, though, and we'll be covering that as it comes out and more. And if you'd like us to cover any particular gameplay or talk about any particular topics, please check them in the comments below. Oh, I know something we can discuss very quickly before we go, in. You always do this. Yes, what? CitizenCon. Uh, it's now going to be on the 9th of October for a digital event. Cool. Um, so I suspect we'll do a stream covering that live. Mm-hmm. watching their stream and just having a bit of a chat and getting involved with that where we can. You haven't been to a CitizenCon before, have you? Nope. Stin will start to be coming to sort of like um, bar citizens and citizen cons and office stores and stuff. Um, so I'm hoping that she starts to, to, to really enjoy them. We're looking forward to hopefully visiting the Frankfurt office, potentially before and after it changes over to the new one building, things like that. I'm just looking forward to going when it changes over. <laughs> oh my God, their, their, their new office looks amazing. But yeah, so we should be covering... CitizenCon, what do you think of a virtual only event? Do you think that works great? Do you think it works better than a physical event? I don't think it works better than a physical event. I don't think anything can be as good as a physical event. Mm -hmm. But given the situation, it's better than what we had last year. Yeah, because we had nothing last year. People would go, oh, we <laughs> yeah. had the birthday celebration. And yeah, we had that entirely instead. Like, And it was very minor. There was, there were, It just seemed so much like they were just unprepared. Like, I don't know what they were thinking. They they should have had something more. Even if it was just last minute, shit, we'll just do a, a live stream with some devs. They could have done like a, a two hour live stream. And that would have been a, a yeah. great replacement for Citizen Khan last year. Looking forward to, to CitizenCon this year. Should be good. It's uh, maybe not as good as a physical event, but we'll have them again. One day we'll have physical events again. It is going to be free, isn't it? It's just a free event. It basically. is entirely free. This event is free to watch, whatever. However, you can buy this CitizenCon goodie pack for 10 to $20 with a load of like jackets and flair and badges and shit in. But yeah, you can probably expect a ship sale, um, some new ships or, or variants of ships. Sometimes they have like a capital ship. 
Right. Anything else? Anything else you've seen throughout the week, Sin, that you want to talk about? No. No. I think we're done. There's a, a lot of chat about Star Citizen stuff. Mm. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, if you've got any hot topics that you'd like us to look at, discuss, or um, play, talk about, whatever, um, chuck them in the comments below. It's very helpful. Uh, love you guys, Slates. Um, say say goodbye, Zin. Goodbye, Zin. Oh, you see? She always says that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care. Peace. Love you. Bye. Bye. Do you have questionable taste in anime? Do you not want internet pirates looting your internet search history? Do you want a way to have more accessibility to the internets from more countries? Or is your security and privacy important to you? Well, get NordVPN. I shill for them and you should use the code BOARDGAMER or the links below for a discount. Try it out. It's like a fleet of escort ships making sure your internet experience doesn't get griefed. We have the April ship giveaway as well for a Mercury Star Runner. The ship is extremely multi-role and should be part of any budding citizen's fleet. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during the month. A random commenter will take that prize. These giveaways and the wider channel content are made possible by people that go the extra mile by becoming a Patreon or a YouTube channel member with that join button in the links below. And me and Zin, the editor for the channel, are now trying to put out regular exclusive content content as a thank you. We'll also be asking you in those videos to help shape the channel with uh, making decisions about what content we do and how we do it. Please consider joining if you're really enjoying the content. It really does help. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content, and I'll see you in the verse.